we have seen that n n m equal to capital N n into capital N m that is number of solutions of f x congruent to 0 mod m. So, we have a polynomial congruence and number of solutions of this polynomial congruence mod m is denoted by capital N m. This is a temporary notation capital N m when we know that N m is a multiplicative function function and that means for m n equal to 1 g c d of m n n equal to 1 n m n equal to n m multiplied by n n. This is for number of solutions mod m n. Not only that we can get actual solutions mod m n from solutions mod m and solutions mod n that comes from the proof of this result because of the bidirection between solutions mod m n and solutions mod m cross solutions mod n bidirection that gives you solutions mod m n. Thus from the proof of this result we can get all solutions mod m n from solutions mod m and solutions mod n. So, let me write down the procedure for getting solutions mod m n. <clears throat> so, let x 1, x 2, x r be all solutions of f x congruent to 0 mod m in a C R S mod M. Okay. Take any C R S mod M, find out all solutions of this mod M. Let y1, y2, ys be all solutions mod N of the congruence. Okay, that is f x congruent to 0 mod n you consider and suppose these are all the solutions in a complete residue system mod n some fixed C R S mod n. Now, m n are co prime. So, for each x i and each y z you can find out an integer let us say z i z such that that z i z is congruent to x i mod m and it is congruent to y z mod n such a z i z you can find out in any fixed complete residue system mod m n. So, in a complete residue system mod m n there is a unique 
ZI Z such that ZI Z congruent to XI mod M and ZI Z congruent to YZ mod N. And what we have proved tells us that these ZIZ give all the solutions in the given CRS mod MN. These ZIZ 1 less than equal to I less than equal to R, 1 less than equal to Z less than equal to S give all solutions of f x congruent to 0 mod m n in the given c r s mod m n. And extending this you can get the result for any m from result for prime powers. Okay. So, take any number m positive integer and write it as product of prime powers. If you want solutions of f x congruent to 0 mod m, get solutions mod prime powers, those prime powers which exactly divide the number m. So, if m equal to product p i r s to a i, i equal to 1 to r, p i primes which are distinct and a i bigger equal 1, then n m equal to product of n p i r s to a i i equal to 1 to r and not only this is true, but you can also get solutions and solutions of f x congruent to 0 mod m can be obtained by combining solutions of this congruence f x congruent to 0 mod a, 0 mod p i r s to a i this is the exact power of p i dividing m you combine solutions mod p i r s to a i by Chinese remainder theorem by Chinese remainder theorem. So, Chinese remainder theorem is very much useful tells you that you can find solutions in this fashion. Not only that, you have a method of finding out these solutions. So, because of this solving congruences mod integers, positive integers is reduced to solving congruences mod prime powers. Because of this, Solving congruences mod integers, positive integers is reduced to solving congruences mod prime powers powers so as an example solve let us say x square plus x minus 2 mod 36 equal to 0 congruent to 0 mod 36 
this is the value of m which you can write as product of prime powers 2 square into 3 square and if you know solutions mod 4 and solutions mod 9 then from them you can get solutions mod 36 that is better because you have to find out 0 1 values of this for 0 1 2 etc up to 35 instead of that smaller numbers are involved if you take modulus just 4 or 9. So, <coughs> this is equivalent to x square plus x minus 2 congruent to 0 mod 4 and x square plus x minus 2 congruent to 0 mod 9 find out solutions mod 4 mod 9 and combine by Chinese remainder theorem. So, what are solutions for the first one? So, this is 1 let us say call this as 2 call this as 3. Now, you should take 0 x equal to 0 this is not 0 x equal to 1 1 plus 1 minus 2 that is 0. So, what is the solution mod 4? What about 2? 4 plus 2 minus 2. So, that is the solution and 3 9 plus 3 12 minus that is not a solution. So, x congruent to 0 0 is not a solution, but 1 is the solution 1 and 2 are mod 4 are solutions of 2 equation congruence equation 2 congruence equation 3 what are solutions so x equal to 0 that is not a solution x equal to 1 1 plus 1 minus 2. So, x congruent to 1 then 2 4 plus 2 minus 4 that is not a solution 3 9 plus 3 12 minus 2 is not a solution 4 16 plus 4 uh, 20 minus 2 that is a solution ok. So, 4. Phi 25 plus phi 30 minus 2 that is uh, not a solution. Then 6 36 plus 6 42 that is not a solution. 7 49 plus 7 56 minus 2 that is a solution. Okay. So, 7 is a solution. Then 8. 8 is you can say essentially minus 1. So, minus 1 square is plus 1, minus 1 that is uh, 0 and uh, minus 2. So, it is not a solution. So, these are 3 solutions mod 9 are solutions of 3. Now, you combine these by Chinese remainder theorem. So, uh, we can say x and let us say or a and b. So, first thing is x congruent to 1. So, 1 and 2. Well, let me write this as a and this as b. So, a has possibilities 1 and 2. This is mod 4 and this is mod 9. So, mod 4 and this is mod 9. Okay. And here you can take 1, 4 and 7. And now you want to find solutions mod 36 from this. 
and now the idea is the following that given any number here mod 4 and one number mod 9 there is going to be a unique number mod 36 which is congruent to the given numbers mod 4 and 9 there is going to be unique number that's what Chinese remainder theorem tells us unique mod 36 now this unique number how to get so either you follow the method of Chinese remainder theorem or sometimes you can get the answer by trial if you get one answer that is the answer because there is no other answer your answer is unique modulo 36 so by trial if you get some answer you can just take that as the final answer now for example 1 mod 4 and 1 mod 9 that means 1 mod 36 immediately you get 1 mod 36 now 1 mod 4 and 4 mod 9 what will you do so you just see the idea is that you start with 4 itself okay is 4 congruent to 1 mod 4? No. So add 9 to it. 4 plus 9 is 13. Is 13 congruent to 1 mod 4? Answer is yes. So 13 is the answer. You do not have to go ahead. Because you have got the answer. You stop there. Okay. So what I have done is you consider various possibilities mod 9. So 4 mod 9, 4 plus 9, 4 plus 9 plus 9, etc. Because you have to go up to 36 all possible uh, elements mod 36 you should consider. So this is the answer we have got. So you see that the Chinese remainder theorem answer you can get by trial like this for small numbers. If the numbers are large you have to really follow that procedure summation AI capital MI capital MI dash that formula is there you have to use that. Now let us start with this 7. Is 7 congruent to 1 mod 4? No it is not. What about 7 plus 9 that is 16 it is not congruent to 1 mod 4. Again add 16 to it we get 25, 25 is it congruent to 1 mod 4? Yes, so 25 is the answer here, 25 is the answer, is it clear? That you start with one of them, uh, this say 4, go on adding multiples of 9 to that and see whether other congruence is satisfied. So this is by trial you can find the solutions mod mn, similarly you start with this. So you want uh, now 2 mod 4 and 1 mod 9 or 4 mod 9 or 7 mod 9. This you have to combine. How to combine that? So start with 1. Is it congruent to 2 mod 4? No. So add 9 to it. 1 plus 9 is 10. 10 congruent to 2 mod 4? Yes. So I can write 10 here. I do not you do not have to go ahead because once you get solution it is unique. So that is the only thing you can write immediately. Next start with 4, is 4 congruent to 2 mod 4? No. So add 9 to it, 13, is it congruent to 2 mod 4? No. Add 9 to it, 22, is it 2 mod 4? Yes. So 22 is the answer. Next 7 and 2 you have to combine. So is 7 congruent to 2 mod 4? No. 7 plus 9, 16, 16 congruent to 2 mod 4, no, again add 9 to it, 25, it is not 2 mod 4, again uh, add 9 to it, so 34 and 34 is congruent to 2 mod 4, so 34 is the answer. So this is how you have got all the solutions. So combining by Chinese remainder theorem, it can be simple also sometimes by trial you can get like this but it is not just arbitrary trial it is there is some system in it we have used one of the congruences and then look at the other one okay so this is the set of solutions mod 36 so the congruence number of solutions is also number of solutions mod 4 multiplied by number of solutions mod 9 so 2 into 3 6 6 solutions are there and what are they? The congruence x square plus x minus 2 congruent to 0 mod 36 has 6 solutions. What are they? Namely, now we can write them in some order like 1, 10, 13, 22, 25, 
and 34 mod 36. These are the all the solutions, nothing is left out in this. These are all solutions mod 36. Now you would see that if you had directly found out the solutions, you could do it certainly. But then large numbers are involved, then you have to find out 31 square plus 31 minus 2, you have to calculate that, see whether it is 0 or not and so on. So 36 calculations you should have done. But here how many calculations are there? 9 calculations for uh, modulus 9 and 4 calculations, so 13 calculations plus once you get 6 solutions, there are 6 more calculations combining combining solutions. So that way it is simple, especially numbers are large then you will see that this is really a very nice method. So because of this Chinese Revolutionary theorem, now you are reduced to solving congruences for prime powers and how to do that. So let us see methods for that. Solving congruences mod P raised to R. Where P prime and R bigger equal 1. This is what we want to do now. <coughs> so if you can do this, then for any M we can get the solutions by Chinese Revenger theorem. Again, we have to make this problem also simple in some sense. Suppose you want to find solutions mod, let us say uh, 27. <coughs> okay. Now, if you have a solution of a congruence mod 27, says x naught is the solution, f x naught is congruent to 0 mod 27. Then f x naught is certainly congruent to 0 mod 3 because 3 divides 27. Now f x naught congruent to 0 mod 3. So you can say that this solution x naught mod 27 comes from a solution mod 3, comes from a solution mod 3. So uh, that means if you know for example that for a congruence, say so 1 is the solution mod 3, but 0 and 2 are not solutions mod 3. Okay. Now from this we can get some information immediately mod 27. So suppose f x congruent to 0 mod 27 you want to consider. And suppose f x congruent to 0 mod 3, for this 1 is solution and 0, 2 are not, suppose for modulus 3 suppose. Now what will happen is, if I get a number like let us say 21, 21 is 0 mod 3 and from that I can infer immediately that 21 cannot be a solution mod 27. Okay. Because if f 21 is 0 mod 27, then f 21 is 0 mod 3 also. But 21 is congruent to 0 means f 0 is also 0 mod 3. But f0 is not 0, we are saying that 0 is not a solution mod 3. So the advantage is that you should look at the smaller powers, prime powers. If uh, we have a solution like this one, this solution mod 3, there is a possibility that there is a solution coming out of this one modulo 9, 27, etc. It is a possibility. But something is not a solution mod 3, then anything which is congruent to that will not be a solution mod higher powers. This is one simplification for prime powers. 
Okay. Now, if here what is the solution mod 3 suppose, then from 1 we can get 3 possibilities mod 9. What are the 3 possibilities? 1 mod 3. I get 4 mod 9, then 7. So, 1 itself is there, we can write 4, 1 plus 3 is 4, 4 plus 3 is 7. These are 3 possibilities mod 9. Okay. These are different modular 9, but they are same mod 1. Now, if 1 is the solution mod 3, then these are 3 possibilities coming out of this. Are they all solutions mod 9? That may not be true. It may be that only this 4 is the solution mod 9, whereas 1 and 7 are not solutions mod 9. So, these are possible solutions emerging from a solution mod lower power. Okay. So, what we have is when you solve congruences mod prime powers, you look at the previous powers. Something is not a solution modulo a smaller power, from that no solution will emerge for higher power of p. Okay. Whereas, if something is a solution mod let us say p or p square, from that some numbers emerge, some of them will be solutions, some of them may not be solutions, this is possible. Okay. This is the general theme of uh, solving congruences mod prime powers. Again, <coughs> if we, uh, so let me write down this thing, if x is a solution modulo solution of f x congruent to 0 mod p raised to r, then it is a solution mod p raised to k for all 1 less than equal to k less than equal to r minus 1. It has to be a solution mod all the lower powers of p. If x1, x2, xr, uh, let us say xs are all solutions of f x congruent to 0 mod p raise to i, then any solution of f x congruent to 0 mod p raise to i plus 1. Suppose I take, I want to, these are solutions mod p raise to i, I know. I want to look at a solution mod p raise to i plus 1. It has to come from, so this has to be a solution mod p raise to i. But all, all solutions mod p raise to i are x1, x2, xs. Okay, that means our solution has to be congruent to one of these numbers modulo p raise to i. Okay, that is the point. So, any solution of this must be congruent to one of x1, x2, xs mod p raise to i. If a solution y mod p raise to i plus 1 is congruent to 
एक्स यू मॉड पी रेस टू आई वी से दैट Y the solution Y mod p raised to i plus one emerges from the solution x u mod p raised to i. Okay. And every solution mod p raised to i plus one must emerge from a solution mod p raised to i. Okay. Every solution mod p raised to i plus one must emerge. It must come from emerge or come from a solution mod p raised to i. it must come from this so what is the relation between this y and this x u so y is congruent to x u mod p raised to i so here y congruent to x u mod P is to i. That is the difference y minus x u is divisible by P is to i. So it is t times P is to i. Okay. So y minus x u equal to t times P is to i. And this t you can. Uh, uh, you can take between 0 and uh, p provided we write here congruent so so y minus x u is you can say congruent to t times p raised to i mod p raised to i plus 1 with 0 less than equal to t less than actually y minus x u is t times p raised to i but uh, t may not lie between 0 and p but uh, you can reduce it and uh, we can make it lie between 0 and p in that case you get congruence so that is y is congruent to one t is between 0 and b minus 1 so if you take y to be a solution mod p raised to i plus 1 then it is congruent to a solution let us say x u mod p raised to i and therefore y congruent to x u mod p raised to i gives y minus x u is it is equal to t times p raised to i for some integer t but if you therefore say that this is congruent to this mod p raised to i plus 1 then this t will lie between 0 and p okay so what we should do this gives you a method of finding solutions mod p raised to i from uh, p raised to i plus 1 let us say so find out all solutions mod p raised to i and then for these solutions you consider numbers of the type x u plus t times p raised to i where t is between 0 and p and these are the various possibilities for solutions mod p raised to i plus 1 these are various possibilities some of them may work some of them may not work 
which values of t will work that is what we have to find out. And there is a systematic method which tells you which values of t will work. And there we have a lemma which is called Hensel's lemma and which is similar to the Newton's method of finding solutions to a polynomial equation or a transcendental equation using derivatives. So, this method is similar to that. So, we will see this now. So, for before that let me tell you about the expansion of uh, let us say f of this x plus t times p raise to i something of this type using Taylor's theorem. So, <coughs> so suppose A is a solution mod p raise to i. Okay. We are having a congruence f x congruent to 0 mod p raise to i and you have a solution. You want to find out solutions mod p raise to i plus 1 which emerge from this A. Okay. So, we want to find of f x congruent to 0 mod p raise to i plus 1 emerging from A. These solutions are of the following type. Such a solution is let us say B congruent to A plus T times P raise to I mod p raise to i plus 1. Such a solution is of this type a plus t p raise to i mod p raise to i plus 1, where 0 less than equal to t less than p. t is between 0 and p minus 1. As I said some values of t will work, some will not work. Which values work we have to find out we have by Taylor's theorem f of b is equal to f is a polynomial. So, f of a plus t p raise to i mod p raise to i plus 1 and we can expand this f of a plus t times p raise to i and f of a plus t times p raise to i is equal to f of a plus t p raise to i f dash a plus mm. now <coughs> t square p raise to 2 i into f double dash a upon 2 factorial. plus and so on plus 
Now this f will be a polynomial of some degree. So suppose it is of degree r. So t raise to r, p raise to r times i, f r a upon r factorial and uh, so f a plus usually you know that f a plus h is f of a plus h f dash a plus h square upon 2 factorial f double dash a plus h raised to r upon r factorial f r a and because it is a polynomial of degree r there are no higher derivatives involved and this is where you stop where r equal to degree of the polynomial f x belonging to z x. Okay. f is a polynomial with integer coefficients and suppose degree of the polynomial is r. Then we stop here, we do not have to consider higher degree terms. Okay. Here uh, we have some difficulty, what happens modulo p raise to i plus 1. Now we have to consider that equation a b equal to equal to or congruent to f a plus p p raise to i mod p raise to i plus 1. The writing this is fine, but now please note that these numbers f double dash a upon 2 factorial upon r factorial etcetera. Although this r factorial is in the denominator and you may think that p may be in the denominator, then how will you consider this? But what we have to do is you have to consider these numbers separately, they are actually integers f double dash a upon 2 factorial, then f triple dash a upon 3 factorial, they are all integers. That is what we will see and therefore this can be very much considered mod p raise to i plus 1. So actually the polynomial f x can be split up as sum of terms of the type uh, c times x raise to j. So the polynomial f x is a sum of terms like c times x raise to z. Okay. Coefficient and some power of x. Now if you take derivative of this, take any uh, specific derivative of this. So m the derivative. So d c x raise to z dx and mth derivative if you take. What will this be? So it is c into, so j into j minus 1 etcetera, j minus m plus 1 into x raise to j minus m. this is the derivative and here this is a product of m consecutive integers and product of m consecutive integers is divisible by m factorial. So here j, j minus 1 etcetera, j minus m plus 1 is a product of m consecutive integers integers and hence it is divisible by m factorial hence it is divisible by m factorial hence
what happens for a specific term happens for the polynomial also okay so m the derivative if you take at a specific a and divide by m factorial then that will be an integer hence f m a by m factorial is an integer for any integer a this is what we wanted and uh, therefore all these in this expression that we considered earlier all these things they are integers and uh, now we want to find out b from a such that f of b is congruent to 0 mod p raised to i plus 1. So this is uh, the background of uh, this uh, result of getting b from a by a specific procedure b is of the form a plus t p raised to i 0 less than equal to t less than p. So I will now write down the theorem let fx belong to zx let a be a solution of fx congruent to 0 mod p raised to i a be a solution mod p raised to i let b equal to a plus t p raised to i 0 less than equal to t less than p then for what values of uh, t b is the solution mod p raised to i plus 1 that is the question so we have the following cases the cases are like this one this is Hensel's lemma Hensel's lemma. Suppose f dash a is not congruent to zero mod p, then there is a unique p only one t out of the p possibilities such that 0 less than equal to t less than t minus 1 and b equal to a plus t p raised to i is a solution is a solution of f x congruent to 0 mod p raised to i plus 1 there is unique t and what is this t so this t is given by t congruent to minus f of a f dash a bar mod p where 
A dash A bar is the inverse of F dash A mod P. It is like 1 upon F dash A. This is like 1 upon F dash A. Inverse of F dash A mod P. This is see that once F dash A is not congruent to 0 mod P, we can think of inverse of f dash a that is f dash a bar we multiply uh, this by f a and that is the value of t. So you get uh, f a upon so minus f a upon f dash a that is fine. So actually this comes from see f of a plus t times p raised to i is f of a plus p p raised to i f dash a and uh, t is so I will have to write actually divided by p raised to i that I will have to write and f dash a so f a upon p raised to i please make this correction f a upon p raised to i f dash a and <coughs> so t p raised to i is this and therefore and B is congruent to A plus T p raised to I is into F dash A. So this is uh, this is zero. So this is also zero mod p raised to i. T is value of t is right. Now once you get this value of t, what is b? So b is a plus t p raised to i mod p raised to i plus one, and uh, that is b is congruent to a minus f a f dash a mod p raise to i plus 1. This is like Newton's formula for uh, solutions in Newton Raphson method. You can say Newton also Newton's formula or Newton Raphson method in numerical analysis. See that this is xn plus 1 equal to xn minus fxn upon f dash this is bar bar is here please upon f dash xn compare it with xn plus 1 equal to xn minus fxn upon f dash xn. This is the recursion formula for getting better and better solutions in the Newton Raphson method. Okay. Just see that this is A is previous solution x like xn, fxn that is fa and f dash a bar that is 1 upon f dash xn it is comparable to that it just like that. This is Henson's lemma to get solution mod p raise to i plus 1 from solution mod p raise to i. This is 1, 2, suppose f dash a congruent to 0 mod p. If f a is not congruent to 0 mod p raise to i plus 1 then the congruence f x congruent to 0 mod p raise to i plus 1 has no solution 
of the form a plus p p raise to i. This is second. If f dash a congruent to zero mod p and f dash and f a congruent to zero mod p raise to i plus one, then there are p solutions b equal to a plus t p raise to i for 0 less than equal to t less than p modulo uh, this congruence modulo p raise to i plus 1 modulo p raise to i plus 1. There are t solutions, so there are p solutions of this type modulo p raise to i plus 1. So, the proof of this is that the equation uh, from Taylor's theorem f of a plus p p raise to i is equal to f of a plus t p raise to i into f dash a plus t square p raise to 2 i f double dash a upon 2 factorial plus etcetera that is what we have and we can say it is congruent to f a plus t p raise to i f dash a mod p raise to i plus 1 this is the thing because all other terms are divisible by p raise to i plus 1 and therefore f b congruent to 0 mod p raise to i plus 1 if and only if f a plus t p raise to i f dash a congruent to 0 mod p raise to i plus 1 and in the case 1 this holds if and only if now we can divide by p raise to i because p raise to i divides f a congruent to minus t f dash a mod p okay that is so this is the thing t is congruent to minus f a upon p raise to i f dash a bar mod p and once you have this thing and then b is congruent to you just substitute the value of t we get a minus f a f dash a bar mod p raise to i plus 1 this is part 1 and part 2 and 3 if uh, f dash a congruent to 0 mod p you get uh, f a upon p raise to i congruent to minus t into 0 mod p this is the transformed equation from that one t into 0 means 0. If so in case 2 uh, if f a congruent to 0 or say let us say not congruent to 0 mod p raise to i plus 1 then this is non-zero mod p 
and non zero mod p congruent to zero mod p is a contradiction and we get a contradiction so no t works no t works and if f a congruent to zero mod p raised to i plus 1 then we get zero congruent to zero mod p that is every t works every t works okay that proves the result every t from 0 to p minus 1 works this proves the all the three cases immediately okay